Okay, so again, I have 5 over 5. I have uh, 5. 5. Okay, then we open parenthesis. Cosine of 5x. Okay, and this whole cosine of 5x, we then raise that to 3. We couldn't actually, like, uh, input this trigonometric function with an exponent the same way as in the calculator so we'll just uh, do it like this okay so the entire cosine of 5x will be raised to 3 so then we have calc then our x is equal to pi over 5 okay so you could have pi over 5 so the answer is negative 5 So we are done with uh, function number 4 given a equals 5 over 5. Let's have the next function. So we we'll have okay, number 5. That's y equals sine sin 4x squared plus 1 half of cosine of uh, 8x. Okay, so uh, there is one approach when you don't directly get the derivative, you could first simplify the given function itself before you get the derivative because in that way, uh, we could there could be ways that we could express, let's say, this function into a simpler form. Okay, and with a simpler function, we could uh, more easily get its derivative. Okay, so you have, again, let's just rewrite that. Okay. We have number f 5, uh, that's number 5, rather. So you have y is equal to sine of 4x squared and then we have plus one half of cosine of 8x okay is that right okay it's correct okay now we could see here in this function uh there's 4x and here that there is 8x now we could directly remember a trigonometric identity that could help us make this in uh, turn into a simpler form. Now, let's say we have sine squared of 4x. Let's say this is sine squared of u. Okay. Now, remember in our trigonometric function, okay, we have sine squared of u, that's 1 minus cosine 2 times u all over 2 okay so let's just rewrite it here so that we could it could help us as our guide sine squared of u equals 1 minus cosine of 2u all over 2 now if you'll convert this one if we will pattern it with this one you could actually convert this into in terms of cosine so we'll have sines sine of 4x squared equals okay our u here will be 4x therefore 2u is equal to 2 times 4x which is 8x so we have 1 minus cosine of 8x all over 2 so we could um replace this one with this one 1 minus cosine 8x over 2 so we have we could uh, express this function we have 1 minus cosine of 8x over all over 2 or that's 1 half then you have cosine of 8x over 2 so they distribute lang natin yung denominator 2 then we have here plus 1 half of cosine 8x or cosine 8x all over 2. Okay. So, this one, negative 
positive cosine 8x over 2. That's equal to 0. And therefore, this is actually just simply equal to a constant value of 1 half. Okay? And the derivative of a constant value will always be equal to 0. Okay? So, yun. So, it has been uh, by turning the original function into simpler form, we could actually more easily get the derivative of that certain function. Because, what if we will try to directly get this derivative without simplifying this using the trigonometric identity? So, again, let's have a different approach just to confirm that the answer, derivative of that function, which is y equals sine of 4x squared plus 1 minus, or uh, rather, 1 half cosine of 8x. Okay? So, just to confirm that the derivative of this one is equal to 0, let's try another approach like uh, getting directly its derivative. So, we'll have y prime is equal to k. Sine squared of 4x. So, we'll have the power formula. We have 2, okay, we just bring down the exponent and you have sine of 4x, okay. Then, the derivative of sine 4x, derivative of sine is cosine. Then, derivative of 4x is 4, okay. Then, we have plus, you have 1 half times derivative of cosine 8x, which is negative sine of 8x. Then, derivative of 8x is 8. Okay? So, we now have... Okay, we could multiply 2 and 4. Okay? So, we have 8 sine of 4x cosine 4x. Okay? Then, we have minus... Okay? 8 over 2. Okay? That's equal to 4. So, you have minus 4 sine of 8x. Okay. Now, we could pattern this, this term to one of the trigonometric identities, which is 2 sine u, okay, cosine u is equal to sine of 2 times u. Okay. So, in this case, we'll have uh, 2 sine of 4x times cosine of 4x is simply equal to sine of 2 times 4x because our u here is 4x or that is sine of 8x. Okay, so we'll go back here in the first derivative of the function. Okay. So, we'll have 8 sine 4x cosine 4x. We'll extract 2. 2 sine 4x cosine 4x. Everything multiplied to 4. So, we'll have 4 times 2. That's 8. So, we are... Uh, we are not changing any value here. Then we have minus 4 sine of 8x. And we know that this value, this value, 2 sine 4x cosine 4x is simply equal to sine of 8x. So we have 4 times sine of 8x, then minus 4 times sine of 8x. And this is equal to 0. So, you see with this approach, I think it's longer than, than when you simplify first the function itself. And with this simplified form, you could easily get the derivative. But anyway, the two approaches uh, will yield the same answer. Maybe let's have another... Uh, last question, last function to to get 
to dif differentiate. So, 1 minus cosine of 4x all over sine of 2x. Okay. One minus cosine of four x over sine of two x. Okay, I guess I could make this um, transform this into another um, symbolic expression with the same value. So we know that uh, we could use a trigonometric identity wherein one minus cosine of 2u all over 2 simply equal to sine squared of u. Okay? So you can see here, cosine 4x and then we have sine of 2x. Okay? So, 2x, if you have 2x as u, then it's... Um, or if you have 4x as our 2u, then therefore u is equal to 2x. We could actually get use this trigonometric function. Okay? So in this case, if we are going to have 1 minus cosine of 4x all over 2, okay, that would be equal to sine squared or sine of 2x squared. Okay? Because if your u if your 2u is 4x, then therefore your u is equal to 2x. Okay? So we have uh, since we don't have a denom denominator 2 which is required to get this, then we will put a denominator 2. So, we now have y is equal to, okay, remember we are not yet getting the derivative here, okay. We are trying to transform it to a um, different expression but with the same value, of course. So, you have 1 minus cosine of 4x, then it needs a denominator 2, okay. Now, to negate what we added as a factor, then we also multiply 2 at the numerator. And of course, we should also retain sine of 2x in the denominator. Okay, so we, ha we now have this one. Okay, so um, what, what happened is uh, we added a denominator 2, but we also added a numerator 2. That's why we are simply multiplying this equation, or this expression rather, with 1. So it does not change any value at all. The value at all. So we have y equals, so we have this is, e is simply equal to sine squared of 2x. Then we have times 2 over sine of 2x. Or we simply have 2 times sine of 2x squared over sine of 2x divide this by sine of 2x then we all only have 2 2 sine of 2x okay so therefore this function is just equal to y is also equal to 2 sine of 2x okay and we could we have a simpler function so we could easily get it's derivative so you have 2 sine derivative that's cosine and then derivative of 2x is 2 so the derivative of the function given is 4 cosine of 2x okay that's how Okay, so actually we could also directly, let's have another approach, okay? We could actually directly get the derivative from the original function of y cosine 4x and then one minus uh, sine of 2x, okay? So we could directly use quotient rule. So we have first derivative of that. So, for quotient rule, if you could still remember, if you will get the derivative with respect to x of two functions of x, which is, uh, let's say, u as the function of x in the numerator divided by v, function of x in the denominator, that's just equal to, 
Okay, the entire denominator of the derivative is the original denominator raised to 2. Then in the numerator, you have the original denominator v. Then derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator. Okay. So, in this case, we will treat 1 minus cosine 4x as our u and sine of 2x is our v. Okay. So, we now have the derivative that's all over sine of 2x squared. Okay. And then, we copy the denominator sine 2x. Then, derivative derivative times derivative of numerator 1 minus cosine of 4x. Then minus, we have the numerator 1 minus cosine of 4x. Be careful with uh, placing the parenthesis because if this does not have a parenthesis, then you could only distribute negative 1 with this first term only. Okay, so it will really give a difference. Then times the derivative of the denominator which is sine of 2x. Alright. So, let's have a separate solution for for the derivative of 1 minus cosine 4x. Okay, so this is just to... So, so that you won't be confused during this uh, solution. So, we have derivative of 1, that's 0. And then the, ne the derivative of negative 4x, you have the negative 1 constant, times derivative of cosine 4x, that's negative sine of 4x, then derivative of 4x, which is 4, so or that's simply equal to, sorry, negative 4 sine of 4x. Then for the de derivative of sine 2x, that's simply equal to the cosine of 2x, times derivative of 2x, which is 2, or that's simply 2 cosine of 2x. Okay? Next, we will uh, substitute this into the equation of y prime. So, you have y prime now equal to, you have sine of 2x times derivative of 1 minus cosine 4x, which is equal to negative 4 sine of 4x. <clears throat> Okay, and then minus 1 minus cosine of 4x. Then we have multiplied 2. We have uh, derivative of sine of 2x, which is 2 cosine of 2x. Then everything all over sine squared or sine 2x squared. Okay, if we have this kind of equation, um, it would be better if we distribute the denominator to each of the terms in the numerator. Okay? So, for the first term, we have negative 4 sine of 2x plus times sine of 4x. Okay? Since they have the same function sine, but they didn't have the same function inside of the trigo function, you can't multiply this one. Okay, so maybe you, just to delete your confusion, let's say you have sine of 2x, sine of 4x. This is definitely not equal to sine of 8x squared. Okay, it doesn't mean that if they have the same trigonometric function, then you could easily multiply the function inside. That's totally wrong. Okay go back here okay then you have my uh, this is now all over sine squared of 2x and then you have here we have minus um, if you will distribute 2 cosine of x with 1 so that's negative 2 cosine of 2x all over sine of 2x squared Okay, that's for this one. Negative 
uh, negative 2 cosine 2x times 1 all over sides were 2x. And then we have negative 2x cosine 2x times negative cosine of 4x that's positive 2 cosine of 2x times cosine of 4x and also divided by sine uh, sine of 2x squared. Okay? For this equation, you could cancel here sine x, 1 sine x in the numerator and 1 sine x in the denominator. Okay? Mm, what could we do now? Um, mm -hmm. Let's see what we can do. Let's check trigonometric identities. Hmm. Let's have cosine of the x. That's cosine squared sine squared. No cosine. Let me just delete this. So, uh, let's try a different distribution of the denominator. So you have, again, you just copy negative 4 sine of 2x, sine of 4x, all over sine of 2x squared. Okay, and then we'll have negative, okay, we have 2 cosine of 2x. Which is multiplied to 1 minus cosine of 4x all over sine of 2x squared. Okay? So, maybe we'll just use again this trigonometric function wherein uh, 1 minus cosine of 4x all over 2 is equal to sine of 2x squared. So, in this case, okay? Again, we have this. You could cancel this one. We can cancel one. Okay. Then we have negative 4 sine of 4x all over sine of 2x. Then we have minus. Okay. Let's have 2 cosine of 2x all over sine of 2x squared. Then that's just same as multiplying with... 1 minus cosine of 4x. But I want to give it a denominator of 2. So that I could use this identity. But since I gave a denominator of 2, I also have to give a denomina uh, numerator of 2. Just so that it's just the same as multiplying everything to 1 and the value does not change. Okay. And then in this case, you now have negative 4 sine of 4x all over sine of 2x. Okay. Then we have minus, so you can multiply 2 with 2. You have 4 cosine of 2x all over sine of 2x squared. And this is now equal to sine squared of 2x. Okay. We have sine squared of 2x. Okay. Be good. Cancel. So this is now equal to. Okay, let us say. We now have negative 4. Sine of 4x. Let's say we use this trigonometric function. Which is uh, 2 sin u cos sin u is equal to sin of 2u. Okay? So if we have sin of 4x a sin of 2u, that's just equal to 2 sin of 2x cos sin of 2x. 
Okay, since we have sine of 4x right here, let's uh, change it to 2 sine of 2x cos sine of 2x. Then everything all over sine of 2x. Could cancel this. Then we have minus. Okay. Uh, 4 cosine of 2x. So this is negative 8. So 4 times 2. We have negative 8 cosine of 2x. Mm -hmm. This should not be negative. It should be positive. Mm, positive pala to. Sorry ha. Okay. It should be positive. Nothing. Let's just clear it up. Okay, positive pala siya. Ito, positive. Alright. So, ito, positive 8. Minus 4 cosine of 2x. Okay, they have the same factors, cosine 2x. Okay, so we could use uh, 8 minus 4. So, therefore, our first derivative, 8 minus 4, that's 4. Then, copy cosine of 2x. So, Ayun. could appreciate more if for this first approach we have uh, you know a simpler flow of solution but here th there were confusions because the more complex the equation you, involving trigonometric functions the harder it will be for us to simplify it okay so I guess it would be better that as long as you could initially simplify using trigonometric identities the original function before you get its derivative then that's it okay next we will have differentiation of inverse trigonometric functions so how do we get the deriv derivative of arc sine arc cosine arc tan arc cotangent arc cosecant arc secant of certain functions